Red Raiders. Good evening and welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers Basketball. My name is Peter Zimbor, journal alongside my broadcast partner Chris Bazile, and tonight the Lady Boxers host the Red Raiders of Barnstable High School from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Brockton enters this game with a record of four wins against two losses. Barnstable with a record of two wins against one loss. Early in the season, but so far so good, Chris. You've done a few Lady Boxers games so far this season and they've looking pretty solid under the tutelage of head coach Chris Connolly. Yeah, they are looking pretty solid and I'm really interested to see the game uh, to see the starters and Jayla Sock, Jayla Smith. So Jayla Smith played soccer for the um for the Lady Boxers. She was a really good soccer player. I believe she I believe she um led the led the team in goals. A dual sport athlete. So she is a dual sport athlete. She's also a senior. So she's going to write so hopefully she'll graduate and ride off to the sunset and we'll see we'll see what she produces tonight. Starting five for the Brockton Lady Boxers, number 35, Jade Wint will have the tip off. Number one, Jayla Smith, as you mentioned. Number three, Elizabeth Williams. Number 11, Neilani Montero. And number 22, Alexandra Williams. We'll get to the starting five as we call them for the Barnstable Red Raiders.
And that was Whiteside on the tip for Barnes to bowl. Ball handling duties to the Brock and Lady Boxers. Number 22, Alexandra Williams moves it over to number three. Elizabeth Williams back over to Williams. The Williams sisters, if you will. I'm not sure if they're actually sisters, but they have the same last name nevertheless, yeah. and the Lady Boxers drop first it, blood 2-0. Yeah, yeah, and it was a nice diss by Alexandra Williams. She looked very active very early. Full the, court press, man-to-man. -man. One on one defense by the Lady Boxers. That's going to create a turnover. And I like their style, very aggressive from the get go. Their style is very aggressive. If they, keep, if they can keep it going this whole game, I believe they'll win the game. Inside the paint, back outside for the Lady Boxers. Number 11, Montero tries to get it down inside to number 35, Jade Wint. Out of bounds, it was off Barnstable, however, so the Boxers will inbound the ball with 7.18 left to go here in the opening period of play. Alexander Williams takes it inside, lays it up, no good, rebounded by Barnstable. It's number 12 for the Red Raiders. Mendez bringing it down the floor. Nice defense by the bo Lady Boxers. Yeah, we're seeing some transition defense in the Lady Box this time. Last time we just saw them swarm Barnstable on their side of the floor. Rebounded by Brockton. From way outside, that's NBA level three, and she sinks it. Elizabeth Williams, Lady Box is on top, 5-0. Head coach Chris Connolly, immediately upon them scoring, yells press, and all the Lady Boxers swarming the Barnstable Red Raiders at their end of the floor. It was a great shot by, it was a great shot by Elizabeth Williams, but Naylani Williams should have went up for the easy deuce. That's the reason her coach was mad. Elizabeth Williams with the steal brings it down. Brockton still possession of the ball. That's going to go out of bounds and off Barnstable Brockton ball. Yeah, the Barnstable Red Raiders, they don't look very, they just don't look, they look a bit, a bit shy. They, they kind of didn't know what to expect right now. And, and the Lady Boxers are really attacking them as well early on. Boxes for three once again. This one in and out, rebounded, or attempt to be rebounded by Barnstable, and it's going to go off. The young freshman, Alexandra Williams, I really like her playing style. She's very, she's very active early and then attempted a two early shots as well. So I can say that was off Barnstable Brock and inbound from underneath. Nice interception courtesy of number 45, Whiteside, for Barnstable. And that's going to be a call against number 11, Nelani Montero. She makes contact. 5.53 left to go in the first quarter. 5 0 as you score. Lady Boxes on top. Peter Zimborn, Chris Bazile calling the action courtside. Montero with the rebound for Brockton. As the Boxers were quickly moving the ball down the floor. Alexandra Williams going to slow things up just a tad for three. No good. Brock with the rebound, however. And we've got a whistle down low. I think the Lady Boxers may have stepped out of bounds, and that appears to be the case. Barnstable ball. Kind of our first substitution of the game as Jayla Smith takes a breather as number four, Anale Lorenzo, checks in. Barnstable, they're trying to give they're trying to give Brockton a run for the money with this full court trap. Yeah, Barnstable trying to do the full court press. It's been effective for Brockton. They're trying to give him a taste of their own medicine. Brockton for three once again, no good. Brockton one for three by my count, shooting three pointers today. We saw Alexandra Williams sink it from uh, the top of the key earlier on, but two subsequent misses by Brockton. They don't want to try to start bringing it back inside. Yeah, Brockton should try to bring it back inside by Jade Went, who just took the shot. 
I like that shot by her. She seems she seems to have a good shot, and hopefully she keeps it going in in, in the game. Got a whistle inside the paint. It's going to be against Brockton. That's going to be against Alexander Williams. That will send Whiteside of the line to shoot two. Barnstable, uh, nearly at the midway point of the opening quarter, is still scoreless. Brockton on top 5-0, and we'll see if Whiteside can end the scoring drought here with 4.48 remaining in the first quarter. And not yet. Yeah, you got to look for Barnstable to go to white side early. I love her height. I love her. I love her playing style so far. And if she can score some baskets, Barnstable could be in this game. Off the back of the rim, no good. So 0 for 2 goes white side at the free throw line. Traveling called against Barnstable. It'll be Brockton Ball. Full court press by the Red Raiders once again. Nice Brockton very easily shot. penetrates that full court press. <laughs> nice takeaway by the Barnstable Red Raiders. Number 12, Mendez, going to bring it on the floor rather quickly off the glass and in. So Barnstable gets on the board for the first time in this game. 5-2 is your score. That was bad transition defense by the Lady Boxers. They got to defend that a lot better. And down low off the glass, number 35, Lady Boxers, Jade Wint. So Brockton answers back. 7-2 is your score. 403 left to go. Exactly. Girls, you're going to want to check down here. Everyone's thinking where the score is table. And it's going to be mass substitutions for the Barnstable Red Raiders. As there was a foul on the other end, I really loved what I see from Jade Wynn. If she could do that consistently, get the ball in the paint, do her move, score, the Lady Boxes could be a good win. If she could do that, because the Lady Boxes do have the, the body against Barnstable. So Whiteside at the free throw line for the second time here in this young game, and this time connects in a first of two free throw attempts. I'm going to see mass substitutions courtesy of the Barnstable Red Raiders. That's going to be in Fresh five on the floor following this free throw. So we'll try to get to the names of all these players as they make their way into the action. Three minutes and 52 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Seven to three, Brockton on top. And Whiteside goes two for two at the free throw line this particular time. And she'll leave the game making way for number 55, Fernandez. So seven four, Brockton on top. 3.52 left to go in the first quarter. Fresh five on the floor for Barnstable Brockton, sticking with their four of their starting five. Yeah, that's Barnstable Red Raider defense. They're really forcing the Lady Boxers to shoot threes, and they gotta they gotta answer this. I actually think it's three of the five starting five for Brockton, and down low, Jade Wint tried to put it off the glass, but was fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. So that is going to be a foul against number 11, O'Donnell Birch for the Barnstable Red Raiders. So first trip to the free throw line tonight for Brockton, Jade Wint. I'm liking what I see out of Jade Wint so far in this game. And kind of an interesting substitution as number three, Elizabeth Williams, checks out for Brockton as number 11, Neilani Montero, checks in. I think it may have been some equipment issue or something, not exactly certain. Jade Wint at the line, nevertheless, for Brockton, and she goes 0 for 2. Nice trap by Brockton. And they're going to call number 22 for the foul. Alexandra Williams, as she was attempting to steal the ball from Barnstable, the same contact was made. Yeah, Alexandra, Alexandra, she has two fouls. She may need to slow it down a bit so far. Nice steal by Alexandra Williams. 
And off the glass and in, number 11, Nelani Montero. Brockton on top, 9-4, 3-16 left to go in the first quarter. Nice takeaway by Brockton, good defense. Alexander Williams now with the ball. And a blocking foul is going to be called against number 55 for New Bedford, or excuse me, Barnstable Fernandez as Alexandra Williams checks out and number three, Elizabeth Williams checks in. 2.54 left to go in the first quarter. Nine to four is your score, Lady Boxers on top. Nice ball movement by the Lady Boxers. Yeah, there's some heated action on the court as I believe I believe the Brockton coach not quite sure of of the out of bounds play of what just occurred, of, of which of, of which which the possession, who holds the possession. But they're gonna but they're gonna give the ball to the Red Raiders. So the official is being very stern with head coach Chris Connolly for the Lady Boxers. Quite honestly, I think that the officials are getting themselves into the game a little too much here. Yes, yes, the pace of this game has been very slow because yes. they like to blow the whistle. Yes, it, that is true, that is true. Nali Lorenzo should have tried to bounce pass on that on that play instead of throwing up throwing up towards the net. That would have been an easy deuce for Brockton. Traveling called against Barnstable, turns it over to Brockton. Barnstable gets the ball back rather quickly, however. No good rebounded by the Lady Boxers. It's a three on two situation momentarily for Brockton. And we got a whistle down low. So we're going to have another fresh five on the floor for Barnstable. Mass substitutions once again. Interesting strategy by the Barnstable head coach. Uh, fresh set of fives on multiple times. Uh, let's, see, let's see how it works out so far. Let's see how it works out for the, throughout for the whole game. Well, only four points on the board so far for Barnstable as we're nearing the end of the first quarter. A buck 40 on the clock, 9-4, Lady Boxers on top. Not been the highest sc scoring affair thus far. But we'd mentioned that both teams are playing a full court press very early. Brockton from the absolute get go. So a very defensive minded basketball game thus far. And Whiteside lays it up and in for Barnstable 9 6. We got a three point ball game. Boxers with the lead. For three, no good, rebounded by Barnstable. And for the first time in this game, Chris, I'm noticing momentum swing in favor of Barnstable with just under a minute to go now here in the opening quarter. Yeah, the momentum is swinging. I believe, I believe the absence of 
Alexandra Williams for the Lady Boxers really, really shut them down a bit. I think, I think her presence in the game will probably will give the Lady Boxers a little spark. Elizabeth no. Williams finds Neilani Montero wide open down low. She lays it in Brockton on top, 11 to six. And also, the Lady Boxers need to set some screens against the against the two three zone defense that the Barnstable is producing. They really need to set some screens. That'll open up the floor a little bit. Instead of instead of instead of passing the ball towards the three points towards three point line. Jayla Smith checking back into the game for Brockton as number 33. Rebecca Thomas takes a breather. I will say this about our officiating crew for tonight. They do have explanations for all their calls, and they are asserting uh, their position very early. First quarter comes to a conclusion. Brockton on top, 11-6. to six. So a five-point edge for the Lady Boxers as we'll be entering the second quarter of play momentarily. Yeah, I like what I've like I seen from the Lady Boxers a bit from early in the first quarter. They did, have, they did struggle a bit. But they need, but they need to, but they need to keep it through, keep it fighting, and play, and play, and sort of play better transition defense. A lot of the Barnstable, the Barnstable Red Raiders had a lot of fast break, tra fast break points, and if they, they just need to play better defense on the other, better transition defense. What do you think? Barnstable, Massachusetts is like in the month of January. When I think of Cape Cod, I think of the beach, I think of summertime, I think of sunshine and boats, and I'm sure their population is significantly dwindled in the wintertime because everyone is there vacationing the summer. I, I can't imagine wanting to be there right now. Yeah, that, yeah, that is really true. The, I bet the population is obviously very, very small. That's, that's more of a summer spot. Mm, Who I do you think takes vacations to Cape Cod in the winter? Anyone? That's actually a good Curmudgeons, question. Curmudgeons, perhaps. I'll, I'll say retired retirees, probably. No, they're in Florida. Oh, they're in Florida. They're in oh, Florida. Okay. They want the warm weather. The, okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's true. Mm -hmm. You get that first snowstorm. The hell with this. I'm yeah, going to Florida. That's true. Mm -hmm. Second quarter begins. Barnesville Red Raiders with the basketball. Nice defense by Kinari King. I love, I love the substitution that the coach put in for him. Number number twenty for the Lady Boxers. Off the glass and in. That was number twenty three, Gordeen, for Barnstable. Eleven to eight. You just score Brock with a three point edge. I like this lineup for the Lady Boxers. Three point attempt for Brockton again. No good. Rebounded by Jayla Smith, and we've got a whistle. I think that's going to be a foul against Barnstable. And that is going to be against Mendez. I think Brockton's only hit one of their three-point attempts thus far in the game. Yes, probably only one, yes. Got a jump ball situation called, and this is going to swing in favor of Brockton. Yeah, as I just said, I like I like Keenari King's aggressiveness, belligerence. She, she got to keep it going. She has to keep it going. The coach is asking for some points from her.
Well, just like that, Brockton answers back with another three. Elizabeth Williams from the outside, 14 to eight, you should score Brockton. And I think, was she fouled while shooting that three? So she'll get one shot at the line with an opportunity to make a four point play. Was that I was seeing? They're actually gonna call the foul on Mendez on Barnes and for Barnstable. But was it in the act of shooting? Does she get to shoot one? No, she's going to inbound. Well. Uh, yes, they're going to rule it an inbound. Mm, interesting. So when did the foul take place? If the basket counted. Nevertheless, 14-8, Brockton on top. Six minutes and 48 seconds left to go in the first half. There's an explanation that's over my head. I'm sure it was right before my eyes and I missed it. Yeah, that's all right. It was, it was pretty tough to see, honestly. I don't blame you. 6.46 left to go in the first half. 14 to eight, just score Brockton. And traveling call against Brockton, Barnstable ball. Williams moved her foot before she dribbled and that's gonna be called for a traveler every time. So foul called against Brockton's Alexandra Williams and the inbounded down low by the Barnstable Red Raiders. Wow, another foul for Alexandra Williams. She seems she, she looks to be the she she seems to be the lady boxer star. And so here's a significant development. That is the seventh team foul for Brockton in this game. So Barnstable is now on the bonus. Every time they're fouled from here on out for the remainder of the half, they're gonna get it one, at least one attempt at the free throw line, which we'll see here. And if they make one, you'll get another if she misses. So that's that. But that could create a significant amount of opportunities for Barnstable. And let's see if Barnstable capitalizes on it. Out of bounds off Barnstable, Brockton ball. Yeah, the lady boxers just can't seem to hit their threes. It's, and they still got a six point lead, so they should be a little happy about that. Pass way out of reach of the intended target. So Brockton will have the ball. Brockton up by eight. 16 to eight is the score. Five minutes and 57 seconds left to go in the first half. 10 minutes of basketball have been played and Brockton has held Barnstable to single digit points. Let's we'll see if they can keep up that pace when Barnstable does have the advantage with the bonus for free throw opportunities. Brockton moving the ball around the perimeter. Shot clock in single digits now. And we've got a call against Barnstable. So foul goes against number 12, Mendez, for the Red Raiders. And Brockton will inbound from the far side of the court. Three-pointer by Jade Wint for the Lady Boxers. 19 to eight is your score for Brockton. I'll tell you, the percentage of free throw shooting probably is not above 50%, but those three-pointers are paying dividends in this game uh, thanks to the fact that defensively they've just held Barnstable to single digits. It's, it's allowing them to really extend upon their lead. Yeah, that's really true. They are, shoot they are shooting a bad field goal percentage from the field, obviously not around 50%. But their defense has been keeping Barnes the ball away from the basket. They just gotta they just gotta play they just gotta play cleaner defense and stop fouling so often.
And Kinari King with the with drawing the foul. I re I'm really loving what I see from her right now. As she goes to the line. First of two is good. For Kinari King, the sophomore. And she goes two for two at the line, Miss King. 21 to eight, Brockton on top, 509 left to go. Traveling called against white side for Barnstable. As Anilia Lorenzo checks back in, she's looking to she's looking to hit a, a three point shot, and here she is. Good defensive play by King. Trying to keep the ball in bounds, however, ends up back in the hands of Barnstable, but nice effort nevertheless. Nice steal by King. Kianari King making her presence felt defensively. That was nice defense by the Lady Boxes right there. Timeout on the floor, 21 to eight is your score. Brockton on top, three minutes and 42 seconds left to go in the first half. That was a timeout called by the Barnstable Red Raiders. Yeah, 13 point lead for the Lady Boxers. They should be happy. And they just gotta keep, keep the momentum going. The Barnstable Red Raiders just haven't scored enough field goals in this game. And they can't seem to get much thoughts off. What was the score at the end of the first quarter? 11 okay. So just two points scored by Barnstable here in the second quarter. Brockton outscoring them 10 to two here in the second quarter. A great run by the Lady Boxes, great run. I think you got to stop and step back and take a look at what a good run it's been because it hasn't been the most quick paced of runs due to these profusion of fouls being called on the floor. It hasn't been a quick paced of run. There's been a lot of there was a lot of there's a lot of there was a lot of confusion on the court with, between the referees and coaches. A lot a lot of fouls, as you said. But the but, but the lady boxes, I think they got this. They're gonna they're hold, they're holding the game. They're holding the game towards towards their side, and they're just gonna keep it going. I bet, I bet I bet the Brockton box I bet the Brockton Lady Boxers coach would would like would like to see a more a more more cleaner cleaner blowout but but they're doing their job though they're doing their job the lady the lady boxers are doing the best they can Shoot it, Reed. 
Brockton able to keep the ball. And off the glass and in, that is Jade Went down low, 23 to eight Brockton on top. Jade Went is having an outstanding game tonight. And that is gonna be a backcourt violation against Barnstable and Brockton will take over. And finally, Barnesville finds themselves in double digits thanks to a lay-in courtesy of Bland. So 23 to 10, Brockton on top, 225 left to go in the first half. 13 point edge for the Lady Boxers. And number 13 for the Red Raiders. She, she, needs, she needs to keep it going for the, for the Red Raiders to keep pace in this game, keep it up. And catch up the Blade of the Box. So bonus situation now for the Barnstable Red Raiders. We mentioned that that could play a significant impact in the latter part of this first half, but to this point it really hasn't. So we'll see if it does now that Fernandez, number 55 for Barnstable is at the line. One-on-one -on -one situation off the backboard and in. I like that, doesn't have to be a perfect swish. Doesn't that counts just as much. That does count, but she should have called glass. It's not street ball, Chris. You can do whatever you want. Now, now with the swish. Oh, there we go. 23-12. Brockton on top. Two good free throws by the by the Barnes of the Red Raiders. Lorenzo, foot was on the line, so that's for two. No good. Rebounded by the Lady Boxers. Ultimately ends up in the hands of Barnesville after a little bit of a fracas. And timeout called by the head coach for the Red Raiders. 23-12, Brockton on top. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Tonight was originally scheduled to be a game where the Lady Boxers would be hosting the Durfee Hilltoppers. However, schedule change and they are hosting the Barnstable Red Raiders instead. How's your New Year's, by the way, Peter? How my, my New Year's was excellent, my friend. How was your holidays and your New Year? Yeah, my holidays was great. Nothing to complain about. It was a good, good time. You know what I miss about the holiday season? What do that you was a longtime staple in Brockton what? that I'm going to campaign to bring back at some point. What? The Rotary Club Invitational Holiday Tournament, the men's tournament they would do here year in, year out oh. for decades, for some reason ceased to exist a few years ago. What team participated in that tournament? Different teams every year, but always Brockton. That's but really there cool. was teams from as far as New York and Canada at different points, That's and really it was cool. a tournament I looked forward to year in, year out, calling the games here in BCA doesn't exist anymore. That's very really cool, wow. It was very cool, but it could be cool again. Could be cool We're going to make the holiday season basketball great again, yeah, Chris, all right? We're going to try our best for that. We're yeah. going to try. Buck 57 on the clock here in the first half. Brockton on top, 23 to 12. And that's going to go out of bounds off the hands of Fernandez for Barnstable. So Brockton will inbound from the far side around midcourt. I do feel like Christmas is a basketball day, however. Yeah, Christmas is a basketball day as there's multiple every, NBA games played on that. Every major sport has their holiday. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, there's football on TV. Yeah. Christmas, it's nothing but NBA and TV. New Year's Day, the past decade or so, it's the annual hockey outdoor game. Yes. And baseball has the all-star break right around the 4th of July. Yes. Every major sport has their holiday. Christmas is a basketball day. Yeah, that's the reason why we love sports. 
Remember a few years ago when they had the NBA lockout yeah. and they debuted on Christmas? It was just perfect. That was perfect. I, be I, believe, I believe the Miami Heat played the Dallas Mavericks on that day, on that night with, when LeBron was in Miami. That was, I believe they won that game as well. It was Shaquille O'Neal's debut as a TNT analyst that day as well. Wow, that's really cool. And that's going to be a foul called against Brockton, I believe. We're going to see number 12, Mendez, at the free throw line for Barnstable. I, I love, I love Shaquille. I know we wanted to say it was out of bounds. Okay. Yeah, I love Shaquille O'Neal on team, TNT. Him and Charles Barkley, perfect combo. Very humorous. I love, I love them both. I love to watch them both. Elizabeth Williams with the takeaway for the boxers. Gets it over to Jade Wint. Went to the other Williams. Back to Elizabeth. Inside to Wint. Inside the paint. Puts it up. No good. She gets her own rebound. Dishes it to the outside. Back inside. Back outside. Williams. Wint Williams. Back to Wint. And they're going to call traveling against the Lady Boxers. That turns the ball over. Great ball moving by the Lady Boxers, but not what they wanted in the travel. They wanted to get Wint inside. And I like that. And I like that strategy. Although that was a careless turnover by the Red Raiders. Fourteen seconds left to go in the half. Box is really moving the ball well. Can they get any points on the board before the half comes to an end? Wint, no good. Rebounded by the Red Raiders. Five seconds on the clock. And the clock's going to stop with 2.9 seconds left as Barnstable steps out of bounds, dribbling the ball of court. So the Box is uh, conceivably going to get an inbound and one shot off before the half ends. And head coach Chris Connolly elects to call a timeout right now. So 23-12 is your score. Brockton with the lead. So, this is looking like a looking like a statement first half for the Lady Boxes against this good Red Raider club, two and one, two and one so far in the year, and and they're trying to trying to earn their fifth victory. No, no. During the second half, towards the end of the first quarter, I made the comment that I sensed momentum at that particular time shifting in favor of Barnstable for the first time in the game. Second quarter begins, and there's been essentially no momentum for Barnstable until this point right now. Very quietly, incredibly quietly, a 4-0 run right now for Barnstable. Yeah, Bar yeah Barnstable. They, yeah, they can keep it going. Um, I, I love I, Mendes needs to be active. Mendes seems to be their most, their more, their most, um, their most active player as she as she sits on the bench right now. We'll we'll see here more in the second half. And if if they can keep it going, White White side, if she could score some baskets in the paint. Yeah, they could they could probably they could probably make a run to get back in this one if they, if I could see more out of those two. Three-point attempt by Brockton, no good at the buzzer. So first half concludes Brockton with the lead by 11. 23 to 12 is your score. You're watching Brockton Community Access Sports. Peter Zimborn, Chris Bazile, courtside calling the action. We'll have second half action after this quick breather. Stick with us. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? 
Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. I've, yeah. It's not my first time bartending, so. It's a sausage party in here. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm very familiar. Yeah, because you're a sexy girl, Sam. Last thing, totally last thing, yeah. is that the music, when Momo kicks it into high gear, is going to get a little bit loud in here. Mm -hmm. So your customers are going to have a hard time hearing you. So you may want to. What? Make sure they don't get too close. No doubt you're going places, young lady. Thank you. And thank you for the interview as well. I can imagine it was the last thing that you wanted to do after such a long campaign meeting. You really are very intelligent young woman. You're very smooth. You're very smooth yourself. <laughs> you have no idea. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. You know, and it's... the salary. Oh my god, yes. Right? I mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you. You know. Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> <laughs> These are cool. Uh, did you, um, what did you? And we're back here courtside at Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions where the Brockton Lady Boxers are on top 23 to 12 over the Barnstable Red Raiders as we begin. The second half of play, Peter Zimmer and Chris Bazile here courtside calling the action, and the Barnesville Red Raiders get the ball to kick things off here in the second half. From the free throw line, no good. Whiteside tried to get the rebound and lost it. Ends up in the hands of Brockton's Jade Wint. A, com a combined 18 points was scored in that last quarter, and let's see, let's see, let's see if we see more offense right now, which is pretty much, I bet, what the crowd wants to see. Nice take by Mendez. First bucket of the second half goes to Barnstable. 23-14, Brockton still with the lead, however. Kinari King tries to answer back. No good, rebounded by Brockton's number 35, Jade Wynn. She puts it up and in 25-14. Yeah, Jade Wynn, I believe she I believe she leads all scorers in this game with points, and she's just, she, she just proving, she's just proving, she's proving of her, she's proving of herself tonight, and a good, 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 good night for her. Keenary King from the outside, no good. And that's going to go out of bounds, I believe, off Jade Wint, and it'll be Barnstable Ball as a result of that. Some consultation with the officials, and they switch it to Brockton inbounding, much to the chagrin of the head coach for Barnstable. Yeah, both of these coaches, they're just, they haven't been quite happy against the referees tonight. Right side for three, no good. Lady Boxes with the rebound. It's Elizabeth Williams who came down the rebound. Ball ends up in the hands of 
the other Williams sister over to Kianari King off the glass and in 27-14 Brockton up by 13. Alexandra Williams, she has she has the height of a of a two guard, but she's playing more of the point tonight. And she's doing a good job of that with with, with good assists so far. Steal by Elizabeth Williams from the Lady Boxers. She's gonna put it up, no good. Rebounded, however, by the Lady Boxers. It's Amanda Alexandra Williams, excuse me, with the rebound. And they're gonna call number 12 Mendez for the reach. So she'll take a breather and number 13 checks in Bland for the Red Raiders. Two minutes and 15 seconds of the second half went by without a personal foul call, Chris. That is not the way the first half went. Three-pointer, was that Jade Went from the outside? It was 30 to 14, Lady Box is on top. 535 left to go in the third quarter. Oh, are you saying Peter? What were you saying, Peter? That might have been the most extended period of time in this entire game we went without a personal foul was what I was getting yeah, at. Yeah, it was good basketball by both teams. I like, I like, this is what I like to see. Nice, nice clean defense and keep, and speed up the game a bit. Nice block by Alexandra Williams. Yeah, Alexandra Williams just doing a, just playing, just not, she, I could tell she really wants to score, but she's doing a good job. She's doing a good job just making her teammates happy and letting them score. And she's, she's doing it on a defensive end as well. So they just uh, sent number 13 for Barnstable to the sidelines for wearing a headband? Wow, that's interesting. There's other players with a headband, perhaps it's not, perhaps because it's tied in the back. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Here. I don't know. I think you should just let the players play, honestly. Lots of discussion about that headband ruling. I, I think the head coach for Barnstable is using what we kind of said. There's other players on the court with yeah. headbands, yeah. including a knotted one for Brockton. Yeah. Apparently hers wasn't tied tight enough, and he said it was hanging down. Yeah, that's what. Exactly uh, that was that was the explanation from the official. Just just got to play by the rules, though. I'm looking at her headband right now, and I can tell you that if there was any question as to whether it was tied tight or not enough, it is tied tight enough to my liking right now. It is. I'm reluctant to be critical of officials because it's a very difficult position to be in, though I do think that this particular officiating crew has interjected himself into the playing of the game a little too much for my liking. Yeah, exactly. I mean, both as I said, both of the coaches haven't been happy with the officiating so far, and and just, and, and it's a tough job, especially basketball officiating. Because I, I it's ba basketball officiating subjective at times. It's exactly subjective. But to their credit, so yeah, I'm critical of them, but I give them credit as well. I think they have been consistent throughout the entire course of the game. Yeah, yeah. Which, I'm if you are a head coach, as long as they're consistent in the calls, you can't complain too much. And I believe they've been, I, I believe they've been a bit fair as well. I think they have. I think that they've been 
consistent in their letter of the law calls. Yes. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Try to be try to be exact to the rules, as we just saw with the Barnstable girl. See, we needed the monitor here. We needed the rebound so we could see at that pinpoint moment how loose the headband was. Yeah. We get to the bottom of headband gate. You know, Kiari King has played Kiari King's played very well defensively for Brock in this game. She certainly made her presence felt defensively. Yeah, she certainly made her presence felt defensively. She's been guarding she's been guarding she's been guarding the point guard for, for I believe most of the ten most most of the for most of the night. And she's also she's also doing it on the offensive end as well, drawing fouls and scoring a few baskets as well. And we're going to have a foul called against number 21 for Barnstable. Now number 13 for Barnstable. She was the girl in question with the headband, correct? Who's going for the line now? Look at this. No headband. Yes. And there's another girl with a headband on for Barnstable as well. It's a tightly tied headband. Tightly, yeah. I like, I like the addition of Antoinette Oko in the game for, for the lady boxers. And hopefully hopefully she could hopefully she could do her job and do what the coach wants. Number 14. Jade went down low, off the glass, no good. Rocking with the rebound. And we're gonna have a foul against Barnstable. The inbounder Natalie Lorenzo, she's she's been very active tonight, and she 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 disrupted Barnes the ball a bit in this game. She's done she's done her part. And that is number 22, Alexandra Williams, laying it up and in for the Lady Boxers. 32-14 is your score. Nice take by Alexandra Williams. You know, any surge of momentum that Barnesville's ever had in this game has been so incredibly brief throughout the course of this game. Yes. It's been three. The Lady Boxers just been playing great defense on them. 18 point right lead here. for the Boxers right now, and Williams. She dished it to a player who we had not seen yet in this game, who couldn't put it up and in. The Barnstable Red Raiders only scoring two points in this in this quarter. And the Lady Boxers defense is really showing it. And the Lady Boxers defense have been very physical against this Red Raider club. And that is Antoinette Ako, the junior, off the glass and in for Brockton. 20 point edge, Lady Boxers. 34 14 is the score. And they're going to call a foul against Jay to Wint. And that is going to send the headbandless number 13 Bland the line for Barnstable. Hey, Peter, it seems like the personal fouls have picked up a bit now.
First of two is good at the line for Bland. Nice pass. Jump ball called. That was some good defense by Barnstable down low. It was, it was good, good defense by Barnstable and nice f facilitating by Alexander Williams. And that, and that block, and that Barnstable defender with the block on, on Nailani Montero was really good. Prevented a basket. Alexander Williams almost all alone. One defender around her lays it in. 20 point lead, Lady Boxers, 36 16. Just over a minute to go in the third quarter. A commanding lead for the Lady Boxers. Ooh. And count the bucket and one. Bland will go to the line. Bland has been pretty active for the Red Raiders. The coach is loving what he's, what he's seen out of her. She needs to continue this if they can have a, a sparking fourth quarter for the Red Raiders. Fifty-three seconds left in the third. That was some good defense played by Barnesville, smothering the Lady Boxes upon the inbound, and Bland for three, and she sinks it. She's really picked up the pace. Most certainly, most certainly. Since she removed the headband, her effectiveness has gone up infinitely. That's really true. <laughs> I guess the referee knew. I guess the I guess the referee sort of Perhaps. predicted what she was gonna, what she, how she, how she was gonna produce. had to confirm, yes. Since Bland has lost the headband, she's become far more effective than she was previously. Yes. And it's not like she was having a bad game to begin with. Most certainly. I, be yeah, I, believe, I believe she has the most points for this Red Raider club right now. And Alexandra Williams at the line for the Lady Boxers. And the Lady Boxers are now in the bonus. So let's see if that comes into play as we still have an entire quarter of basketball left to be played. Yeah, you could expect you could ex you could expect Blend to play the majority of the fourth quarter as well. 38-21, Brockton on top. That's going to be off Barnstable Brockton ball. 27.9 seconds left to go in the third. Yeah, the Lady Boxers really needed that that turnover swing because as as I seen, I seen the momentum changed a bit. As Blend as Blend as Blend was contributing heavily for the Red Raiders. And let's see and let's see if, if the Lady Boxers could score this these final 27.9 seconds. Mm. 
blend again. Two seconds left to go in the third. And the third quarter comes to an end, 38 to 23. Brockton with a 15 point lead. Nice surge of momentum for Barnstable to end the third quarter, but Brockton has been in control of this game from the get-go, Chris. Yeah, that is true. Alexandra Williams, she's, she's, she's proving why she's, she's, she's the team's best player. And as we see Kinari King, Kinari King is probably what Brockton really needs, a, a, a tenacious defender. They really, they really need her to step up. If she could score some baskets, she, but she just, she just took a little break. And this should be a pretty interesting fourth quarter, as you said, a surge by Barnstable. This should be an interesting fourth quarter. If Barnstable could catch up or if Brockton could run away with it, I'm not quite sure what we'll see. Eight minutes of basketball left to be played. Nice three by Jade Wint. Jade Wint from the outside. 41-23, Brockton on top. Seven minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the game. Whiteside tries to lay it in. And we got a whistle. And they're going to call a foul against Brockton. It is an 18 point game, but this game just seems a bit closer than the score indicates, honestly. I mean, 18 points is a lot of points, but Barnstable seemed to be in this one. They've they had burst of energy here and there, but they've not been consistent. That's been their problem. Yeah, they, yeah, they, really, just, they really couldn't score baskets either, as the, the Lady Boxes defense was doing a good job on them, too. There were, there were possessions where they couldn't even get shots off. 41-25, Brockton on top, 7-20 left to go in the game. So Kenari King will head to the free throw line for the Lady Boxers. Nice defense by Kinari King. She's been a star defensive player for Brockton's entire game. Both teams are in the bonus now. So every time a whistle is blown for a personal foul, someone will go to the free throw line. Yeah, let's, and let's, yeah, let's see if they'll just score their baskets from the, from the charity strike. Prepare for potentially the longest six minutes and 45 seconds in the history of basketball <laughs> if this game keeps going the way it's going. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> Forty-one twenty-seven, Brockton with the lead. Six forty-two left to go in the game. Squeeze it. 
as Elizabeth Williams, as she missed that layup. She's not having the game as she, as she would like today. Whiteside just tossed that one up. Keenary King with the ball. She'll shoot for three. In and out, no good. Rebounded by the Red Raiders. I'm trying to do the calculation of what the average is of seconds in between each personal foul in this game. And I want to let you know that my program in front of me is a chicken scratch mess of mathematics, and I have no idea what the average is. Oh. There's just been a lot of fouls called in this game, folks. There have been a lot of fouls. There have been. We'll leave it at that. 43-31 is your score. Brockton on top. Barnstable did hit a three-pointer as we have five minutes left to go in this contest. Keenari King off the glass and in for Brockton. There's going to be a whistle. And no foul, but her shoes were untied. Headband tightly wound around her head, however. Yes. I think that's been giving her her secret mojo this game. <laughs> Nice defense by King again, as she, as she drew the turnover. Bland with the ball. Ooh. Lays it up, no good. Ends up back with the ball, shoots for three. No good. And that is going to be out of bounds off Keenari King. It should be Barnstable ball. Sort of desperation time for the, um, for the Red Raiders. I think, I, think, I, think they should, I think they should turn to the full court trap. That 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 did that gave Brockton a little trouble early early in this game, and let's see let's see if, and let's see if they can probably catch up. Down 
Wow. Yeah, Peter, we just seen a, an array of turnovers from here to here, here, here. <laughs> Brockton extends upon their lead, 47-31. Bland from the outside, no good. White side with the rebound for the Red Raiders. She goes up with a chase foul, she'll go to the line. Kianari King down low for Brockton. Timeout. Brockton has played. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a technical foul called against Chris Connolly, head coach for Brockton. Mm, wow. He's gonna sit down now. It doesn't matter. You're up by 15. Yeah, it's safe to say Brockton. I thought he was calling a timeout. She gave him a technical for, God knows what. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the temperament of these two coaches were a, a, little, a little interesting today. No, but as I was saying, Brockton has just played very efficient this second half. Really, it's really nice to see them play like that. Really nice. They did, they did have some, they did stumble a bit, but they, they, be, they, they played pretty well this second half. Nice block by Brockton's number 22, Alexander Williams. <laughs> Mendez and Blend have 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 had great e have great have, have both have, both have had great evenings for the Barnstable Red Raiders. I believe they have the majority of their points. Breaker! Go! 
Bland for three. Bland just won't quit. And suddenly we've got a 10 point game with just over two minutes to go. So 49-39 Brockton on top. Kianari King, she'll shoot the three. No good. Rebounded by the Lady Boxers. Williams coming down to rebounds. Alexandra gets to over two. Number 30, Angelina Fernandez. We've got a whistle called, and I believe Fernandez heading to the free throw line, shooting at least two. Fernandez has, pretty, has been pretty active late in this game with some rebounds and some baskets. So timeout called by head coach Chris Connolly for Brockton. 51-39, Brockton up by 12. Buck 50 left to go in the game. I will say that the head coach for the Barnesville Red Raiders is fired up trying to inspire his players, knowing that down by 12 points with a minute 50 left to go, not an ideal situation, but not insurmountable if a few things go their favor. Yeah, they, yeah, they may need a lot of things to go in their favor, as in some fouls and some three-point shots, but I, but I love the heart that the Red Raiders showed tonight. They, they, they really didn't quit. They really, they really played. They really played the full game, but the lady boxes were just scoring their baskets. I mean, I, be, I believe the Barnstable head coach is gonna hate Alexandra Williams and Keenari King after this game, and Jade Wimp, because those, because those three have had just a great afternoon. A great, great night here in Brockton. The Lady Boxers have struggled from the line a bit. So, so let's see if the Red Raiders could probably catch up a bit. But I'm, but I'm confident with Jade Witt on the line though. Let's see if she could nail these two. Nice defensive play by Alexandra Williams, but she stepped out of bounds. So we're going to see Elizabeth Williams at the line now. Makes her first. Brockton up 53 to 39.
Jade Wint puts it up, no good. Rebounded by Brockton, and uh, Montero is going to be fouled. And she'll head to the free throw line. The lady boxes must sink their free throws. Alexander Williams with the steal. Ooh. <laughs> I believe the coach for Barnstable just said she was doing the Mike Allstott, a reference to the early 2000s fullback for the oh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mike Allstott. <laughs> Yeah, Malgasta was a really good fullback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers back in his day. Him and Warwick Dunn, they were the backfield. Warwick Dunn, yes. I believe he played a game with a broken arm one time. Just Ooh. kept going right at the middle. Nice reference by the Barnesville Red Raiders coach. I bet not many people in this cr audience know who in the crowd who knows who Mike Allside is, but real good, real good, real good player. Some people consider him as one of the best power backs in NFL history, but. Oh, I don't want to go that far, but well, he's uh, he's he's sort of in that class. He was effective in the, in the lower tier. In the lower tier, I'll put him in. Yeah, obviously the more well-known guys are ahead of him, guys like Jim Brown, Earl Campbell, and those guys, obviously they're ahead of him. Franco Harris, all, but, but Mike Allstott was a... Mike Allstott's not a, in the Hall of Fame. He's oh. not going to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> he was an effective guy for the early 2000s. He's, he's a, it wasn't Jim Brown. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say he was effective. I'm not, putting, I'm, not, I'm not saying he was, but he was a... I liked him. I liked him. With the big shoulder pads he had. <laughs> Let's see what Mike Allstott's up to right now on Wikipedia. Oh, we've got 12.3 seconds to kill. The A train, Mike Allstott. He is in the Indiana Football Hall of Fame, and he's in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Ring of Honor. That's true. Your final score from Staff Gymnasium, Brockton 59, Barnstable 39, a 29-point margin of victory for the Lady Boxers as they improve to 5-2. and two. For everyone here at BCA, my broadcast partner, Chris Bazile, I'm Peter Zimbor. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.